It's very nice to be here. Uh, thank you very much to the organizers for the invitation. Uh, so in fact, this is uh, my first time giving a talk in France. Um, so it's, it's like the, the old joke about buses in England. You wait and you wait, and then three come along at the same time. So uh, kind of like that with my talks here. Um, so yeah, and actually, it's particularly nice to be giving it here, because um, I actually have a family connection with this campus. Uh, perhaps surprisingly, my father has a degree in French literature, and as part of his degree, he spent a year uh, as a student on this campus. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, okay, great. So, um, as, as Yasha said, this is a continuation of um, Vaughan's talks from last week, uh, although uh, it will be uh, self-contained as much as possible. So, uh, also following what Vaughan did, um, so for each of these lectures, uh, I'm posting some expanded notes uh, on the conference wiki. So the first two lectures are up there already. Um, so uh, the notes for lecture one are 10 or 11 pages, and it's filling in all of the definitions and extra detail uh, that uh, will, will be emitted from uh, you know, the, the spoken version of the talk. Um, uh, OK, so... So uh, last week then, in our series of lectures about beyond bone specification property, uh, the focus was uh, entirely on measures of maximal entropy. And I think Vaughan mainly stayed in the discrete time setting. He may have gone into flows uh, a little bit. Um, so uh, the two things that we'll do this week, which are different, um, we're going to talk about equilibrium states. Um, so while entropy measures complexity of the, the orbit structure of the system, um, you know, the, the generalization is to add uh, a weight on the space, and then you, you kind of have, have a weighted theory of complexity. So uh, equilibrium states uh, are then the generalization of, of this. Uh, so in this sense, it's going to be a lot more general. Uh, in another sense, it's going to be a lot more focused, uh, because the setting for the whole week um, is going to be um, uh, a manifold M, uh, non-positive curvature, so closed C infinity, uh, Riemannian uh, surface or manifold. Uh, and the dynamical system uh, will be the uh, geodesic flow. I'll try to reserve the letters GT for this um, on X, the unit tangent bundle. Okay. Uh, so uh, Vaughan was surveying all kinds of different systems uh, that, that fall into uh, this regime of beyond bone specification property, uh, whereas uh, all week I'm going to be looking at this class of systems, but the equilibrium state case. Okay. Um, so let's talk about what this system is. Um, so uh, I guess the, the first example to think about, you know, I, I draw a picture, something like uh, you know, the normal picture of, of a genus two torus, uh, except I'm going to draw it with a, a flat cylinder in the middle. Um, okay, so uh, genus two, so that uh, overall the curvature is negative, uh, but we got got a flat cylinder in the middle. Okay, so what, what is the, the, the geodesic flow? Um, so it's the dynamical system you get by picking a point and picking a direction that uniquely determines a, a geodesic. And what's what's the dynamical system? Well, you just walk along that geodesic at unit speed. So, um, so there's a point in the unit tangent bundle. Uh, that defines a geodesic. Maybe it does, does something like this, something like this, ramps around, and I'm just walking along there at, at unit speed. Um, so this is uh, one of the, um, I mean, so in the negative curvature setting, uh, you know, this is uh, perhaps the, the primary example of a uniformly hyperbolic flow. 
indeed, you know, the definition of an Anosov flow uh, was, was made by Anosov you know, to, to capture uh, this, this setting. So in some sense, negative curvature, this is the archetypal hyperbolic flow. Um, because once we allow non-positive curvature, this becomes the archetypal class of non-uniformly hyperbolic flows. Um, okay, so uh, what, what should we, we know about this situation? Uh, well, I, you know, the, the interesting thing about this situation is, um, you know, you have kind of high complexity dynamics coming from the negative curvature, uh, but we also have low complexity dynamics coming from the zero curvature. And the thing that's difficult about these systems is you, you have both those phenomena coexisting in the same dynamical system, and somehow the tricky thing about it is figuring out which one of those effects wins. And that's uh, what we'll be looking at. Um, so with, with that in mind, uh, the unit tangent bundle is uh, decomposed into two sets, which we call the uh, regular set, uh, disjoint union, the singular set. Um, so uh, I'll say what these are. Um, okay, so. Uh, okay, so um, maybe I'll say what the singular set is first. So roughly speaking, the singular set um, is the set of points that are associated with, with zero curvature, low complexity. Um, that intuition is certainly pretty much correct in the surface case. Um, well, I, I'll give the uh, proper definition um, if there exists uh, a parallel uh, uh, orthogonal uh, Jacobi field. Um, so the, the supplementary notes uh, that are on the conference wiki uh, explain what those words mean. If, if you don't know them, uh, I think probably uh, what's more illustrative is uh, just showing you what that means. So this is the stuff to do with uh, zero curvature. So uh, a point in the singular set um, but by the way, uh, the word singular uh, grates with some people depending on uh, your mathematical background. Uh, there's no singularities here. Um, you know, it's, it's a smooth manifold. Uh, th this is just the uh, uh, standard terminology in this area uh, for this uh, definition. So here's a point in the singular set. Just if we're on this flat cylinder, just point due north. Uh, what does the, the geodesic flow do? Well, you know, we just get, get a closed geodesic going round. Uh, okay, and you know, th this is experiencing zero curvature its whole life. Um, so there's, there's a nice understandable characterization of this uh, in the surface case, which I'll write on the board. Uh, so for the surface case, so dimension of the manifold equals two, um, V belongs to seeing uh, if the curvature well, if it experiences cur curvature zero for its whole lifetime. So K is the Gauss curvature, uh, pi is the foot point uh, of, of, of the uh, vector. So if this equals zero uh, for all T. So curvature is certainly zero on the cylinder. So uh, this, this closed orbit you know, is experiencing zero curvature its whole life. It's in the singular set. Uh, so let, let me say something about what Jacobi fields are. Um, well, the, the, the vector fields defined by the uh, Jacobi differential equation, equivalently, they're what you get by taking uh, a one-parameter family of geodesics and, and differentiating in the parameter direction. Uh, so uh, what's a parallel Jacobi field? Um, a parallel Jacobi field is one that's constant for all time. In other words, it just sits there. So you know, th this, these are all inf infinitesimal definitions. But here, the, the parallel Jacobi field here would correspond to uh, taking uh, you know, this point here. Well, what happens with this? You know, th this also goes round. So these two just going round, you know, no contraction, no expansion. These, these are two vectors that j just sit there in perfect lockstep uh, for all time. And that, that corresponds to uh, being a parallel Jacobi field. Okay, so that, that's the zero curvature stuff. What's reg? Well, by definition, reg's just the complement of that. 
So, you know, if we just uh, negate this, all you need to happen to be in the regular set is there exists some time so that you hit negative curvature. Um, so, uh, but the, the thing to point out is that even though something in the regular set, you know, sh should experience some hyperbolicity at some point in its life, it might be arbitrarily weak. Uh, we can see that very clearly through this example. If I took a point which was, uh, you know, same foot point, but instead of pointing due north, just, just a tiny bit off north, uh, what happens with that guy? Well, you know, the geodesic's gonna wrap around and around and around this flat cylinder, you know, for, for as long as we like, by making it closer and closer to north. Uh, eventually, it's gonna, gonna come out here and hit some negative curvature. Uh, so it is in the regular set, but, you know, any, any expansion contraction estimates are gonna be, be arbitrarily weak because of how long I spend wrapping around that cylinder, okay? That's the non-uniform hyperbolicity I was talking about. Um, oh, um, I should also uh, define the word uh, rank one. Um, I, I can define it to be if the regular set is not empty. And again, th this is, uh, has a very easy characterization for surfaces. Uh, in dimension two, uh, this is uh, equivalent uh, to the genus G being greater than or equal to two. So yeah, we, we want to do non-positive curvature, but you know, we want there to be some negative curvature, right? Um, so you know, we want to exclude the flat torus. Uh, that's what the rank one condition does. Um, so for, for surfaces, any non-positive curvature metric on a surface genus greater than or equal to two uh, will, will be, be rank one. Um, and um, even in high dimension, rank one's the typical situation. Um, you know, there's the higher rank rigidity theorem of uh, Bauman and, and Burns and Spatzia, uh, which says that uh, if, you, if you, you're not rank one, you must be a very special kind of manifold. Um, okay, um, so I mean, we'll mainly think about things like this. So other examples to think about, well, you, you could just think about having a single geodesic where the curvature vanishes or, or, or a finite union of closed geodesics where the curvature vanishes. Um, I'll just mention very quickly um, a higher dimensional example to think about. This is the uh, three-dimensional Gromov example. And what we do here is we take uh, a one torus with a cusp and uh, negative curvature, and we, we cut it off somewhere and, and do some kind of procedure to uh, flatten it out. Um, and we're going to product that, product, product this whole thing uh, with a circle, same radius as that. And then we're going to take another copy of this, which is going to be uh, drawn in an evocative way. So, um, so th th this is just this, but I'm drawing this th the other way around because what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to identify it uh, like this. So this circle is identified here, this circle is identified here. So, um, you know, if I didn't switch these around, I'd just be getting a product manifold, um, but the uh, fiendish thing is doing it, doing it like this, okay? Um, this is a th three-dimensional manifold, um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'll come back to its properties later. Well, why don't I just say something about singular and regular. So a geodesic that spends all its life on this side uh, is gonna be singular. You've got a parallel Jacobi field just corresponding to moving in, in this circle direction, and it just sits there. Now, what happens when you cross over from, from this side to the other? Well, you know, th these directions have, have switched around now to, to different coordinates. Um, so, you know, e even though, you know, you still have something sat there when you're over here, you know, it's not lining up with the thing on this side. So anything that crosses uh, from one side to the other is in the regular set. Um, so th this is quite, quite a fiendish example. Uh, one thing that, that shows, well, one phenomenon here that is fiendish is that the singular set has positive entropy. So I think you can imagine that the set of things that stay on one side uh, has positive entropy. Okay, so um, that's a serious source of uh, additional difficulty in higher dimensions. For surfaces, the singular set has, dimension, uh, has entropy zero. Um, 
All right, so uh, what else should I say about the setting? Oops, what am I doing? This one. Um, okay, so. Um, oh, I should have probably said somewhere. Um, okay, so uh, my, no my notation is going to be x is the phase space, so unit tangent bundle. Uh, then we look at you know, the tangent space of, of that, so tangent space of the tangent space. Uh, this has uh, invariant sub-bundles. Uh, ES and EU, uh, which uh, vary continuously. Um, and intersect non-trivially uh, if and only if uh, V is in the singular set. Um, so let's try and get, give some insight into this. Uh, this is how we really see the non-uniform hyperbolicity. Um, well, the, 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 there's two ways to construct this, uh, local or global. The local version is based on uh, Jacobi fields. Uh, I, I wrote that up in the supplementary notes. Maybe I won't mention that now, uh, but you have stable Jacobi fields, unstable Jacobi fields, um, and uh, that, that can be used to uh, define this structure. Um, I will say something about the, the global construction of this. Um, um, so we can define this in the uh, boundary is infinity. Well, the, the correct way to do it is look at the boundary at infinity and, and Boosman functions. Um, so, you know, what do we want to do? Um, so, there's V, we, we want to construct ES and EU for, for this V. Um, so, that gets a geodesic, it goes, goes where it goes at infinity. Um, so, you know, constructing some kind of you know, weak stable um, is, is not difficult at all. You know, we just look at all the other things that asymptote uh, to the same elements of the boundaries infinity. Um, so, you know, I know. Um, you know. Uh, all these things are going to the same place. Uh, but the difficulty is, you know, picking out the time coordinate so that, that things are in phase. So, um, you know, in the uniformly hyperbolic setting, we can define the stable just to be, you know, the, the set of things which, with distance going to zero. Uh, but th that's not what you want to ask for here. That's too restrictive. You have to ask for the stable to be things, well, okay. So maybe let's try asking for the stable to be things that stay bound at time as you go forward. Um, well, you know, th that would give you know, something like this that will give, give all of the points on, on all these geodesics, but you know, you want to pick out the time that's, that's in sync. So that, that's why you have to be, be careful because, you know, how do you distinguish from what you want and something which is just, you know, a bit further along this geodesic, you know, you know, we, we need to distinguish the stable from, from the flow direction. And, and the, the way to do that uh, properly uh, is with, with Boosman functions, uh, but th there's a nice, uh, Nice uh, cheat uh, to see this without defining Boosman functions. It's essentially equivalent. Uh, it's a nice geometric construction. So uh, what we can do is take um, take a circle uh, of radius r uh, around uh, g r of v. And take limit of these circles. Okay, so there's v. Um, that can be g r of v. Take a circle radius r here. Then it's going to look something like like this. Um, I take limits of that, um, and I'm going to get something that looks like uh, a nice. Expected picture of a horosphere. Okay. So that, that would be the uh, horosphere, 
HSV defined in this way. Um, and then I can define WSV so that the stable manifold um, is the inward facing uh, normal uh, unit vector field. Okay, so uh, that's my stable manifold. So it's, it's just the, you know, the, the typical construction that works in negative curvature that also works here in non-positive curvature. Uh, and we can do this, the same thing with uh, unstables uh, going backwards, um, and uh, this this time that yeah, it's, it's the vector field that points in the same direction as this guy. And yeah, the, the point is that yeah, you know, all of these things. You know, if, I, if I take the geodesic through here, that's asymptoting backwards to the same place as, as v, and through this construction, you know, that the times line up. Um, and uh, maybe I'll just draw uh, one more picture. So, um, yeah, l let's notice that, goodness, that was meant to be a circle. Let me get a... Um, so... Um, uh, okay, so, you know, if it happened that, that V was in a, in a flat strip, you know, we're going to have, have the same kind of thing. Uh, you know, let's notice, you know, what, what must this look like here? Um, you know, it must, it must just be uh, a straight line, you know, in, in this, this flat strip region, okay? Um, okay, um, so uh, finally with this construction, so, you know, we, we started with the stables, uh, so, you know, we can get uh, a stable bundle then by you know, looking at the tangent space of, of the stable manifold and uh, on the regular set uh, the sub bundles give you a splitting you know, ES plus EU defined analogously uh, plus plus flow direction, right? Um, um, oh yeah, and uh, about this picture, you know, I said about the about the, these things intersecting non-trivially. Uh, here's something which is certainly in sing. Uh, so you know, you can see here that the you know that the, the, these vectors here are in both the stable and the unstable. So you, know, you get this whole thing being in both stable and unstable. Uh, so, you know, the point is that these things are still defined everywhere. That's very important for our analysis. Um, but you only get the splitting uh, when you're on the regular set. Uh, otherwise, you know, there's going to be at least one dimension where these things coincide, and you're not going to have enough dimensions, and it's no longer a splitting. All right. Uh, okay, so that's probably... That was geometry. Now let's talk about dynamics and some results. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll very quickly define uh, pressure and uh, equilibrium states. I'll write ES for equilibrium states, uh, inviting you uh, to look at the extended notes on the conference wiki for more details. So uh, we're putting a continuous function on the space. Remember, for us, X is the unit tangent bundle, and we can define the topological pressure uh, by the variational principle. So we'll define it as a soup of entropies. We can consider the entropy with respect to the time one map uh, because of Abramov's theorem um, plus the integral such that M is a flow invariant uh, probability measure. Okay. 
Um, and of course, uh, this also has a definition as a growth rate of, of partition sums. So, uh, you know, uh, putting in the zero function here corresponds to the measure of maximal en to, to the entropy, um, where you know you, you're just counting the number of n epsilon separated sets and taking a growth rate of that. Uh, with pressure, you're doing the same thing, uh, but instead of just counting you know, the number of things in an n epsilon separated set, uh, you know you're, you're weighting each point by the function and taking the exponential growth rate of that. Uh, so that will be familiar to many of you. For those of you who, uh, who, who haven't seen these definitions and you would like to, uh, I invite you to look at the uh, notes on the conference wiki. Um, and an equilibrium state um, is a measure achieving this, achieving this supremum. Um, one more bit of notation. P sing phi is the pressure restricted to the singular set. So one thing I didn't say, and maybe I should have done, is that the singular set is closed and invariant. So you know we can consider uh, this as its own dynamical system. You know, just restrict the geodesic it flows to the singular set, um, and we can look at the pressure of that. Uh, this is the pressure of x restricted to sing. So thinking about this definition. <coughs> We could define it as the sweep of entropies plus integrals, such that m uh, is a flow invariant probability measure, such that mu of sing equals 1. Okay. Um, one more bit of notation. Uh, the geometric potential uh, this is the, you know, uh, this is the, the, the most important potential, probably, um, is v u v, this is going to be minus, so minus is just uh, a sign convention which will be motivated later. And what this is, uh, you know, this is just because we're doing continuous time. Here's the bit that, that matters, a logarithm and a Jacobian determinant of dgt restricted to e u of v. Okay, so what's this doing? That this is measuring infinitesimal growth of volume in the unstable bundle. Um, so if this was a map, you know, this bit would disappear. Uh, but because because it's a flow, you know, we want to extract kind of what's happening uh, at that point. So so we have to do this. Okay. Um, and you know, important issue. Yeah, that's why I spent the time doing that. Is that um, you know, you, you think of this, you know, where you have exponential expansion. Uh, you, you might start wondering about what this means on the singular sets, but uh, we showed over here that, that these bundles are defined everywhere. And in fact, they're, they're continuous. So th this is a, a well-defined uh, continuous function. So this is uh, globally defined uh, and continuous. Um, okay. Is it holder continuous? Nobody knows. So that's an interesting open question. So maybe while I'm doing the boards, you know, I, again, this will be familiar to, to, to many of you who work in this field, uh, but of course, the, the thermodynamic theory. Uh, requires that we ask some regularity of the potential, you know, that the classic regularity is, is holder continuity. And uh, in the negative curvature setting, uh, this geometric potential is holder continuous. Uh, in non-positive curvature, um, nobody knows. And in fact, I think it's fair to say that all bets are off. Can you say, can you objecting? Great. <laughs> but I really risk <laughs> Okay. Um, so it, it would be nice if there were some examples which demonstrated that, um, but uh, to my knowledge, 
such examples do not yet exist, which would be interesting. Um, okay, so, um, so why is the geometric potential interesting? Well, uh, the pressure equals zero, uh, and the Liouville measure Uh, mu sub L uh, is an equilibrium state uh, for, for phi U, okay? So the, the Louisville measure is the natural volume measure on the unit tangent bundle, so locally it's uh, the Riemannian volume uh, times uh, Haar measure on, on the sphere. Um, and in the negative curvature case, uh, as I said, this is Holder, so therefore using the classical theory of, of Bowen, um, yeah, this function has uh, a unique equilibrium state. Uh, this is an equilibrium state, so, so it's this one. Uh, so yeah, th this is a, a major motivation for the whole theory um, is that um, you get, get this measure uh, as a unique equilibrium state in the negative curvature setting. Um, once you do that, that's giving you all kinds of tools that uh, you, you can apply to, the, to, to this very important measure in this very important situation. Okay. Um, I said a little more about this in the notes. Uh, this might look mysterious if you hadn't seen it before. Uh, that This is essentially um, a, a very slick repackaging of the ruel margulis inequality and, and the Pessin entropy formula. Um, and, and the fact that, um, that the, the integral of the geometric potential is, which we round, uh, minus uh, log of the uh, sum of the positive Laplov exponents. Um, and the minus sign there, th that sign convention is so that we get this formula. Um, okay. Um, all right, so let me finally state a theorem. So this is BCFT, uh, B being the, the gambling man, Keith Burns. <laughs> Uh, C being uh, Vaughan Kleimenhager, who of course gave the lectures last week. Uh, F being Todd Fisher, who sat there. T being myself. Um, and this is a theorem about uh, uniqueness of equilibrium states in this setting. Oh, let me also say that equilibrium states always exist for continuous potentials. That's a consequence of having enough expansivity. So uh, th this is related to uh, David's talk earlier. Uh, this is an entropy expansive system, so automatically existence is okay, uh, but uniqueness uh, is uh, a whole, whole different thing. Okay, um, so we're gonna look at uh, two classes of potentials. We're going to look at scalar multiples of the geometric potential. Uh, we used the, so, so Q is just a scalar. Uh, I, I think we went for the letter Q because we'd, uh, a hugely overused S and T <laughs> in our paper, um, or be holder continuous. Um, as discussed, we do not know if this is holder continuous. It's probably not, um, but th there are. But yeah, it, m maybe for surfaces, maybe it is. Who knows? Maybe for some classes of surfaces, who knows? Um, the, the nicest positive result is by uh, Gerber and Wilkinson uh, for, for, for surfaces. Um, they just get hold of continuity, I think, in, in the stable direction, but not the unstable, or maybe it's the other way around. Anyway, so this is not covered by Holder. That's why we've set it up this way. But this is the interesting case. Um, and uh, in, in the next lecture, I'll describe, I mean, obviously, we need some regularity. Uh, in the next lecture, I'll, I'll describe how we sidestep the issue of not, not knowing holder continuity uh, and what re regularity we do get for this class. Okay, so th this is the uh, class of potentials we're looking at. And we're going to suppose that they, they satisfy uh, what we call the uh, pressure gap. So pressure on the singular set is less uh, than pressure on the whole space. Um, I call this star to refer back to in a minute. Uh, then the conclusion is, uh, then the function 
uh, has uh, a unique equilibrium state. I so I'll call it mu sub phi. Uh, mu sub phi has various nice properties. Uh, it's hyperbolic. It's fully supported. Um, and um, it can be characterized uh, as the weak star limit um, of weighted regular closed geodesics. Um, I won't say more about this last condition. That This is another thing that, that I sent to the, the, the conference wiki. Um, but yeah, that's a nice characterization. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, the single set is not compact. It, it is. The single set? Yes. It is compact. Yes. Very compact. Yes. 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 Um, okay. Uh, okay, so, oops. Let's put this one up. Uh, do, do you mean pressure gap? Yeah. yeah. Um, right, okay, so I, I'm going to uh, discuss this, this condition in a moment. Um, so for the geometric potential itself, Q equals 1, um, certainly for surfaces, there is no pressure gap. <laughs> that's for sure. So we'll say that soon. Um, uh, the, the, the high dimensional case is, is, is muddier. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, in a moment, um, you know, the whole question is going to be, you know, which potentials uh, have this pressure gap? Um, so I, I guess I'll jump ahead. So for, for surfaces, we get a complete picture uh, for, for this family, a Q times geometric potential. The pressure gap switches on when Q is less than 1. It definitely fails at Q equals 1. Um, we're happy with this result. Um, however, if we did get a pressure gap at Q equals 1 we, and prove uniqueness there, a corollary of that would be ergodicity of the Louisville measure. We were happy with the result as it is. If we'd have got that, we'd have been very happy, but <laughs> uh, we probably would not have believed what we, would, what we had done because that's, that's a major open question. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, I will. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Um, I'll give some, some comments on, on, on how reasonable this hypothesis is in a moment, uh, including the situation with the entropy gap. Um, so, um, Next, let me state the theorem that I'm going to prove, discuss, and sketch the proof tomorrow. So you know, once you have this kind of result, uniqueness of equilibrium states, you know, what, what, why do you want to know such a result? Well, I mean, I, I guess it's interesting for specialists, but what you want to do is go further with it. Use thermodynamic formalism to say more about those measures. Um, so uh, I have a result. Uh, with my student Ben Call uh, in that spirit, uh, which says that uh, any unique equilibrium state uh, coming from the above theorem um, is K. So it has the, the Kolmogorov K property. That this is a really strong mixing property. Um, so I'm going to discuss this more in the context tomorrow, but I just wanted to mention that. Um, I'm also going to claim this um, the unique MME mu KBM. So this is my, my fancy notation for the measure of maximal entropy. Uh, so it, in this business, the measure of maximal entropy is often known as the bone margulis measure. And when you're doing it in rank one non-positive curvature, you often add Kniepa's name. So KBM is the Kniepa bone margulis measure. Uh, AKA the measure of maximal entropy. Um, and with this one, I'm going to go all the way and claim that's Bernoulli. Okay. 
so in fact, um, you know, so we're still work in progress here. I'll say more about this tomorrow, uh, but we think we're going to be able to get Bernoulli here. Right now, because we're still writing up and just being a bit careful, uh, we, we do have it for, uh, for the measure of maximal entropy, and, and we're expecting to get all the equilibrium states Bernoulli from here. Okay. Um, okay, so that's what I'll, I'll discuss tomorrow. Um, now let, let's discuss what's going on with theorem one, what, these, what this hypothesis is saying. Okay, great. So we've got some hypothesis for uniqueness. Is it any good? Um, well, remarks. Uh, first remark is that, well, what happens if it fails? So if we don't have the entropy gap, or the pressure gap rather, what happens? Uh, well, it's definitely not uh, a unique, fully supported uh, equilibrium state. Uh, why is that? Again, just basic th thermodynamic formalism, a bit of exp entropy expansivity and the variational principle uh, is going to mean that uh, in this situation we definitely have um, uh, an at least one equilibrium state supported on the singular set. Um, so um, in, in the surface case, we, we can get the, the cleaner statement that uniqueness definitely fails. Um, yeah, okay, so if we, if we want any hope of having a nice unique equilibrium state, we're going to need that pressure gap, okay? So in some sense, this is a, a sharp uh, hypothesis. Um, okay, so let me see. So let's send this up here. Yeah. Yes. So you're asking about what the equilibrium states on the singular set look like. Um, we expect... You may have a unique equilibrium state with two supports. On the... Equilibrium state... Fully supported on the singular set. Uh, maybe. Maybe in higher dimensions. In surfaces... Um, okay, so for a surface, it's going to contain at least one... The singular set is going to contain at least one closed geodesic. A closed geodesic corresponds to two... <laughs> Uh, periodic orbit measures, one going around each way. Um, so for the, for the surface case, we definitely have more than one measure in, in more than one equilibrium state supported on seeing. Uh, so that, that's what I'd expect in high dimension. Well, uh, you, you certainly expect that there to be lots of singular measures in high dimensions too, uh, but I don't quite have the statement to, to rule out that there isn't a unique singular measure, which is why I phrase that a little carefully. Yeah. Just, uh, drop this uh, pressure gap uh, yeah. requirement. When you say that uh, there is unique ergodic equilibrium measure which, uh, among those which are not supported on singular set. No, we can't say anything like that. I, we, I, I wish we could. Um, you don't know that or it's not true? Um, I, 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 well, wouldn't it be great if that was true? Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and it, it certainly doesn't follow from our current techniques in uh, any way that I know right now. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's... Yeah, so in, in that picture up there, every one of those uh, closed geodesics uh, around that flat cylinder, um, it, well, I'll come back to that in, in a moment. Um, is going to be an equilibrium state for the geometric potential. Um, okay, so... Uh, okay, so let me see. So, remark two... Where did remark one go? It's hiding somewhere. I just erased it. Oh, well. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, the case of the uh, zero potential, i.e. the MME, uh, is due to Kniepa. That, that was Keith's comment. 
That was his uh, Annals paper in 98. Um, and that used a completely different method from us. That was all boundaries to infinity construction, a Patterson-Sullivan uh, type construction, uh, and so some very beautiful arguments. Um, and uh, as a corollary of this, um, the topological entropy of the singular set um, is less than the topological entropy of the whole thing. So that this is the entropy gap, okay? So Knieper's proof goes, you know, construct this thing on, on the uh, boundaries infinity, do some estimates, do a whole bunch of abstract thermodynamic formalism, prove that the thing you construct is of the unique measure of maximal entropy, uh, you know it's supported on the regular set, so a corollary right at the end must have this. Um, and as we saw from the Gromov example, this number here, uh, you know, may very well be positive in higher dimensions. Uh, okay, so that, that's great, but the, the problem with that approach is, you know, you, you can't really feel where this result comes from, and you know, this is really something that, that one wants to understand, right? The, the mechanism for getting the, this entropy gap. So, um, previewing my, my third lecture, um, we have a, a direct proof of the entropy gap uh, not relying uh, on having a unique MME. Um, and uh, hopefully this proof passed the test of being something that you know, one can feel. You know, wh wh why does one have this? You, know, you want to see where it comes from. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm going to present uh, in, in, in my third lecture uh, on Thursday. Um, okay, so th then this comes back around to saying, okay, so we want this pressure gap. As soon as we got it, everything switches on. So when do we have it? Well, okay, we have it for the zero potential. Great, um, and using very soft arguments that I, I won't write out now, that, that they're on my uh, uh, notes on, on the wiki, uh, you, you can bootstrap this to potentials which have a hold of potentials with a small range just by using kind of dumb arguments, um, you know, potentials with, with soup minus inf uh, less than this gap, boom, you're gonna get the pressure gap. Okay, so there's a class, but the more interesting class is, oops. Um, you know, this family Q times geometric potential. So let's see what we can get for uh, the surface case. Ah, okay, so now let's take this one down. Okay, I see what I did earlier. <laughs> All right. Uh, this will be my last comment for today. So the last thing I'll do today is, is just to explain what these results mean uh, in the surface case for the geometric potential. Um, you, you can amuse yourself by looking at the, the notes I posted on the wiki uh, by seeing, by comparing what I thought was reasonable to get done in one lecture with what I actually did in one lecture. Uh, um, so yeah, so the next thing after that is to discuss uh, our technique uh, for, for, for proving our theorem. Um, you know, th this is uh, our beyond bone specification property results. So, you know, uh, it, it's very much uh, pushing bones approaches in the specification property. Um, I, I'll say more about that next time. Um, but for now, uh, let me wrap up today's talk by discussing what, what our result does uh, for surfaces for the geometric potential. Well, the geometric potential vanishes on the singular set. That's easy to see, there's no growth there. And the topological entropy uh, equals zero. That's also something that's easy to see. Probably the best proof is based on the flat strip theorem. Okay, so what does this mean about the pressure of uh, any Q and the geometric potential, 
then, you know, it's soup of zeros plus zeros, so this is just going to equal zero, uh, whatever the parameter is. Um, okay, so then we look at the pressure of the whole space. Uh, well, a pretty, pretty soft argument, I think it's using uh, Ruel, Margulis, and maybe uh, Pessin entropy as well, um, is that uh, the pressure of Q times Vu uh, is, greater, is greater than zero uh, for Q less than one, okay? So remember, a Q equals one, that was an equality, right? <laughs> Um, and it's just, you know, a paragraph of argument to get that inequality for Q less than one. It, you can look that up in, in our paper, BCFT, uh, if you want to. So, thus the pressure gap holds uh, for Q less than one, and thus uh, Q for U has uh, a unique equilibrium state. Uh, for Q less than one. So th this is exactly uh, the result that one wants. Uh, in this setting, I I'll just draw the picture of the pressure function, then I'm done. So, um, so the thermodynamics look just like the familiar one-dimensional uh, manville uh, Pomo map. So, I'll just draw the picture very quickly and interpret it. Um, all right, so you know, we can look at Q against the pressure of Q times geometric potential. Uh, it's a convex function decreasing, um, and at one, it does this and just, just goes to zero. Okay, so uh, what, what have we got here? Um, well, uh, in this regime, you know, we've got a unique equilibrium state. This is Q equals one. Here we've got, you know, the, the classic picture of a phase transition. Uh, so what are the equilibrium states? We've got the Louisville measures in equilibrium state. Also, everything in the singular set uh, is an equilibrium state. And we have at least two periodic orbits in there. And then in this regime, um, everything uh, in M sing uh, is an equilibrium state. And again, in the surface case, because of the existence of a closed geodesic, there's at least two things in there. So this is what I was saying about having the high complexity and the low complexity existing in the same system. Um, you know, all of this stuff was motivated by, um, you know, uh, statistical me mechanics. So this can be interpreted as some kind of pre uh, uh, temperature parameter. And, and somehow the interpretation is, uh, you know, when the temperature parameters in this range, the high complexity stuff is winning. Up here, the low complexity stuff is winning. Uh, Q equals one is the phase transition. That's where everything's in perfect balance. Uh, we definitely get, get non-uniqueness. This is the interesting case where mu L lives, and you know, this is a very interesting measure. Uh, we don't say anything about that by our techniques, but you know, we do have, have a complete picture uh, for the rest of this family of potentials. I'll stop there, thank you. Remarks? <laughs> okay, let's send speaker again. Thank you.